The Apocrypha collab event will be hitting NA very soon, and what better way to prepare than by taking a look at one of its most important new servants. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here with a servant spotlight for the world's luckiest homunculus, Sieg. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade, comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 4 star servants. Now, on to Sieg's stats. Sieg has a max HP of 11,288 and a max attack of 8,394, which becomes 7,554 due to his caster class modifier. Compared to the other 4 star casters, he has the second lowest HP stat and his attack stat is also near the bottom of the list. When compared to the other 4 star servants overall, his HP fares a little bit better but it is still well below average and his attack remains one of the lowest for his rarity. Sieg's stat spread is awful, comparable even to Saber Lily. For a 4 star servant he's not particularly strong offensively or defensively. Taking a look at his skills, Sieg's first skill is Artificial Hero Fake rank B+. It increases his NP gain for 3 turns between 20 and 30% and increases his max HP for 3 turns between 1000 and 2000, both depending on level. His second skill is Magecraft Rank C, which increases his arch card effectiveness for 1 turn between 22 and 36%, depending on level. And finally, his last skill is Dead Count Shapeshifter Rank EX. It grants him a special bonus against dragon enemies for 1 turn between 50 and 100% and it also charges his NP gauge between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. For passives, Sieg has Independent Action rank EX, which increases his crit strength by 12%, and Homunculus rank C+, which increases his arch card effectiveness by 6.5%, and his debuff resist by 6.5%. Taking a look at his deck and Noble Phantasm, Sieg has an Arts Buster deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and an Arts Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm, Akafaloga Agarize, decreases the defense of all enemies for 3 turns between 20 and 40% depending on overcharge, and then deals heavy damage to all enemies with between a 450% and 750% damage modifier depending on level. Taking a closer look at his cards, we see that his Quick Card hits 3 times, his Arts hits twice, his Buster card hits 3 times, and his extra attack hits 4 times. He has an NP gain rate of 0.78% and a star rate of 10.8%. Sieg has some very good NP gain despite the 2 hit arts card, mostly due to his skills and passives, and he has average star generating from just one quick card, but some pretty decent hit counts. Sieg is one of those servants that you really cannot understand until you see him in action. And that's because, statistically speaking, he is absolutely horrendous with below average HP, pitifully low attack, bare bones star generating, and mediocre NP gain. He has more in common with your average 3 star than a 4 star. But thankfully this is not the case in practice. Just like in the Apocrypha anime, when Sieg is forced into battle, he far exceeds his perceived limitations. This is due in large part to the effectiveness and synergy of his skills. Firstly, he has a strong passive in his homunculus rank C+. It may not be territory creation A, but it does do a good job of boosting his baseline average NP gain. And it's made even better when combined with his second skill, Magecraft. This is effectively a weaker mana burst as it only lasts for one turn and only boosts your arts card effectiveness by 36% instead of the usual 50%. But thanks to Sieg's passive, that buff is bumped up to 42%. And while it still may not be as strong as a vanilla mana burst, it does provide a good buff to your NP damage and most importantly, it supercharges your NP gain for a turn which is something that is critical to Sieg's playstyle. This buff to NP gain doesn't just end at Magecraft either. Sieg's first skill, Artificial Hero, also buffs his NP gain by 30% and provides an effective 2000 HP heal by increasing your max HP. The increase to max HP is nice to have because it compensates for Sieg's low base HP, but the Noble Phantasm gain is the real star of the skill, as when combined with Magecraft, Sieg is able to gain a massive refund on his NP charge from his Noble Phantasm. And finally, Sieg has his third skill, Dead Count Shapeshifter. This increases his damage against dragons significantly for a turn, and also charges his NP gauge by a good amount. Unfortunately, the bonus damage against dragons doesn't help much since most dragon enemies are rider class, 
and thus you'd never want to use Sieg against them. But just like with his other two skills, the NP charge battery on this one really helps tremendously with setting up for multiple NPs and farming. Skill priority for Sieg is dead count shapeshifter first to maximize your NP charge, followed by Magecraft for the better NP gain and damage, and then Artificial Hero last. Sieg's NP is an AoE arts attack that lowers enemy defense by 20% for 3 turns. The defense debuff activates before damage, so this NP is actually quite powerful. What's more, because Sieg can spam his Noble Phantasm so effectively, it is very easy to stack the defense down on some tougher enemies. But what really makes this Noble Phantasm stand out is that when combined with Sieg's first two skills, it gives a sizable refund on Noble Phantasm Charge. It's also worth noting that because Sieg is so easy to NP5, his Noble Phantasm deals an incredible amount of damage for a caster. For reference, he even outdamages NP1 caster Nero, who is a 5 star and is considered one of the best offensive casters in the game. So don't underestimate Sieg's damage output just because of his abysmal attack stat. Now as you may have noticed from his skills, Sieg's entire gimmick revolves around one thing, NP spamming. And to that extent, Sieg is one of the best around. Very similar to Ryder Mordred, Sieg is able to easily loop his Noble Phantasm two or even three times back to back with minimal support, which makes him one of the few servants capable of clearing three enemy waves. As you can imagine, with a skill set like this that is so dedicated to effortless NP spam, Sieg is one of the best and most efficient farming servants available at any rarity. And there are in fact a number of NP looping strategies revolving around him, many of which don't even require a team of 4 stars or 5 stars. Which brings us to what is perhaps Sieg's greatest strength. He is so easy to use in free to play teams and brings unmatched farming and damage capabilities to free to play players as you don't really need to rely on setups like Double Waver or Double Tamamo to get the most out of him. But for as good as Sieg is in this one area, he unfortunately falls apart everywhere else. He has almost no survivability and very low HP making him easy to kill and not at all suited for long fights. His cooldowns are also decently long and that means his Noble Phantasm spam isn't sustainable for more than a few turns. After he gets off his 2 or 3 NPs, Sieg is a sitting duck who can't really do much of anything until his skills are off cooldown. Sieg doesn't have any utility or damage to offer to the team outside of the initial first few turns of the fight, which now that I think about it does fit in with his lore in Apocrypha with him only being able to draw on his power for short periods of time. So great flavor design, but ultimately it means that Sieg only works in one role, farming. Although that's not necessarily a bad thing since most of the game is farming anyway, but it does mean that when it comes down to team comps, you aren't going to get much out of Sieg unless you pair him with servants who can supercharge his NP gain or his NP meter. So to that extent, there are some excellent free to play servants that can pair well with him, including Mozart, Paracelsus, and Mosh. Mozart's arts buff pairs excellently with Sieg's own buff, plus Sieg can make use of Mozart's star bomb to get some guaranteed arts crits. Paracelsus can also supercharge Sieg's NP gain thanks to his arts buff and the gigantic targetable NP gain buff that he's going to be receiving in NA very soon. Mosh has the advantage of giving Sieg a direct 20% NP charge and can keep him alive with her defensive buffs. Outside of the free to play options, you should still aim to use servants who can boost or charge Sieg's Noble Phantasm as much as possible, like Nero Bride, Tamamo, and Helena. All three of them can drastically boost Sieg's NP gain and also provide sizable damage buffs if you're up against more challenging enemies. Sieg's Bondcraft Essence is Nameless Death. It buffs the NP gain and NP strength of all allies by 10%. Not a bad CE, but you primarily want to use Craft Essences that are going to give you starting NP charge so that you can loop more effectively. Craft Essences like Kaleidoscope, Imaginary Element, Magical Girl of Sapphire, and Dive to Blue. If you're using Sieg against some sturdier enemies or bosses and you want to prioritize damage over NP spam, then go for craft essences that are going to buff your arts card effectiveness and NP damage like Black Grail, Formal Craft, or Collide Sapphire. In the future, I highly recommend using Painting Summer as it gives you great starting NP charge and also improves your NP gain and arts card effectiveness for extra damage and NP gen. 
Overall, Sieg is a tough servant to analyze. On one hand, he is clearly designed with just one thing in mind, NP spam, and he does that flawlessly. He is one of the best NP spammers in the game. He can loop very easily, which makes him a top tier farmer, and his NP damage is comparable to most 5 star casters, making him an excellent offensive caster as well. On the other hand though, he struggles to stay alive as he has low HP for a 4 star and no hard defensive skills. And he's also a selfish caster who brings nothing to the team after he noble phantasms, which can make him hard to utilize in anything but quick farming content. So all in all, Sieg gets a B plus from me. In my opinion, Sieg is invaluable to free to play players and newer players as he effectively allows you to farm most events a lot easier. In that regard, I consider Sieg to be one of the best welfares and I absolutely recommend that everyone pick him up and max him out. However, there is no getting around how poorly Sieg performs outside of that niche. So how much use you're going to get out of him ultimately comes down to how much you need a farming caster. And those are my thoughts on Sieg. This was one of the hardest reviews I've ever had to do because Sieg is just such a good farmer that I can easily see how people would rate him even higher than I did. But he's just so heavily limited everywhere else that it's hard for me to overlook those weaknesses. But I'm interested to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over to our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.